Good morning. Uh, can you hear me? Is it working? Great. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here. I consider it a great privilege because I get to uh, speak with you about something that I really love and that I'm really passionate about. Uh, and I'm going to use this quote that I came across, uh, came across recently uh, to guide our next five minutes together. <clears throat> it's by a Senegalese forestry engineer. And I think the significant part about this quote is that it was said in 1968, which is 60 years ago, and I think it's still quite relevant for us today. And it perfectly encapsulates what I'm hoping to share with you this morning. So, in the end, we will conserve only what we love, we will love only what we understand, and we will understand only what we are taught. For the context of our time this morning, I would like you to equate what we love with uh, our values. What are the values that we have? What are the values of our school? What are the values of our school community, our students, our parents? Um, what are the, our school values are what our school loves. I know that at Saigon South International School, two of your values are dedicated service and respect for all. At Hanoi International School, you're uh, focusing on embracing and celebrating diversity and make, wanting to make the world a better place. And at the American School of Bombay, you're all about enhancing the lives of others and being trustees of the environment. For us here at Eunice Hanoi, we have three values, learning, community, and responsibility. So I'm sure if I looked up the rest of your school's values, there'd be a, a fairly similar theme, a bit of a recurring trend amongst each of these, in that a lot of our schools exist to make the world a better place. Those are the values that we're hoping to entrust and put into our students. Simon Sinek, who's a motivational speaker, I'm sure you're probably quite aware of him, he, uh, he suggests that our values multiplied by our behaviour equal our culture. So I'd like you to think for a moment, does the culture in your school really align with your school values or what you love? <clears throat> Baba Diom's next line says that we only love what we understand. According to him, you have to understand it to love it. School values or mission statements, they're, they're, kind of, they're largely shaped by our student population, by what our families and our community want. And I've done quite a lot of a bit of research recently that suggests that our, our students come to us, <coughs> excuse me, our students come to us intrinsically motivated to learn, they're excited, they're in, engaged, they want to learn, they want to know more. They also genuinely want to share, they want to interact. And there's one study that I came across recently that suggests that students and children are naturally altruistic. They want to do the right thing, they want to do the good thing, and they want to help each other. Now this study suggests that some children, and particularly long, young children, the uh, psychologist here focused mainly on young children, but he suggested that they have an almost reflexive desire to want to help, to inform, and to share. They understand our values. Our students are living our values. They're living what we love as a school. And that's a really good thing. We're in a good situation if that's the case. <clears throat> so you might be wondering, what has any of this got to do with us as a group of educators here at a Vietnam tech conference? And I think it has everything to do with us. I think it's a really important message for all of us here this morning. Baba Diom's last line is that we will only understand what we are taught. We all have a really, really important role in all of this, in this idea of educational sustainability. Sustainability, education, education for sustainability. We're the educators here. Our schools have the right values. Our students come to us motivated. They are the right sort of people that we want to be working with. This is a quote from uh, Irina Bokova, and she's the Director General of UNESCO. And last year she said that a fundamental change is needed in the way that we think about education's role in global development. And she's absolutely right. I really believe that she's absolutely right. We're constantly flooded with images of unsustainability. Sustainability has become a really big buzzword for us at the moment, not just in schools, but in society and culture, and it's all around the world. It's not just relevant to us here. We see images of the effects of climate change, of inequality, of poverty all across our screens, and it's in our faces all the time. It could be an effect of the development of technology and social media, but it seems to be a lot more prevalent to us 
now than it ever was before when I was younger growing up. The good news is the fundamental change has already started. I really believe that great things are happening. You can go online or speak, walk into a school and you can see examples of amazing things happening already. There are students who are taking action to uh, reduce poverty. There are teachers who are teaching lessons all in the name of responsible consumption or promoting, for, uh, promoting equality. There are curricular changes and policy changes in schools and education departments all around the world that are focused on being more sustainable in our schools. It's happening. We've got amazing game changers in education like uh, Bill and Melinda Gates who are sharing data. We've got Hans Ro the late Hans Rosling who shares his data visualizations that all work towards and all share a similar me message that we're in a good position and we're, we're getting better. There are great things happening. It's not as bad or as dire as we, we make out to believe. There, are still, there is still a long way to go. We're not going to pretend that it's all peaches and roses. We still have a lot of work to do. And I think, and I truly believe, that it's going to be our students who are going to get us there. These are three little girls in kindergarten at our school in uni here at UNIS. And they're going to graduate in the year 2030. And by the time they become adults, which is only 12 years away, the world is going to be a very, very different place to what it is now. We have a lot of work to do. They're going to be the ones who are going to have the effects of our work now. So it's, it's time for us to take some action. In this column, <coughs> you'll see a whole bunch of examples of hashtags that you can follow of amazing things happening in schools and in companies and in organizations all around the world that are focused on sustainability and doing good for our, to, for our world, kind of lining up to the values of our school. The SDGs are the Sustainable Development Goals. We focus on them quite a lot here at UNIS. Um, tech for Good, Ed Tech for Good. These are great examples of schools doing fantastic things, all in the name of making our world a better place. You can follow any of those and find great examples if you're stuck or you can't think of anything else. This box is left empty on purpose on this uh, right-hand side. And I, want, I left it empty for a purpose, and I want you to think about what could you write down if you had to fill in that box. I would like you to think about for a moment what's happening in your school. Who are the amazing students in your school or your fantastic colleagues who are doing great things all in the name of sustainability? See if you can come up with your own list of things that you can think of, things that you could support, students you could empower and inspire, colleagues you could work with and collaborate with. Who are the uh, game changers in your school that you can work with to create your own list of things to make our world a better place? Me exhorting you into, uh, me exhorting you is a bit of a weak stimulus for action. So what I'd like you to think about is, what are your values? What do you hold dear to yourself? What are the values of your school? And are you really living those in your school? Is the culture of your school really aligned with your school values? And what are the skills that you have as a group of educators? What are, your, what are you passionate about? What are you, what are you knowledgeable about? What do you have that you can share and contribute to making our world a better place? I really hope that you'll go away from our time here at the VTC and this morning thinking about how you can make our world a better place, how you can make our, our schools a better place. I really believe the quote from Baba Diyum is absolutely correct. In the end, we're only going to conserve what we love. We're only going to love, we can only love what we understand, and we only understand what we're taught. So, I challenge you to be the game changers that our students in our schools need, and it's time to take some action. Thank you very much.